Oh, what's up, YouTube? Audio Jake here, bringing you another video. Eve Online. This one's geared more towards alpha uh, clone state players and new incoming players coming into Eve Online. I wanted to make a video about a relatively easy frigate to get into and a decent weapons platform for new players. I have some friends who want to play this game and they're not exactly sure they want to spend money on it. So they're going to be alpha for a while and they kind of want to try and dabble in PVP, um, you know, a Bizzle uh, space and maybe some security missions. You know, that's basically PVE for EVE Online. Uh, so they asked me to make up a build and unfortunately like my main it has like 60 million skill points so it's very difficult for me to kind of go back to the beginning and, and remember like uh, exactly what it what it, what it's like to be a, a noob in this game, you know, a newbie. So what I did was I made an alpha clone here and basically kind of ran through just the beginning skills. I'm going to put them in the video description of skills that you should concentrate on first in order to get into the Kestrel uh, very quickly. This is the Caldari State Kestrel frigate. It is a missile platform and missile uh, weapon systems are not very difficult at all to scale into. It doesn't take very much time either and they apply very good damage and they have decent range, especially if you pick light missiles. Uh, rockets are the other system for starters and they do more damage but they have much much less range. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, this ship has great bonuses to start off with. So if we go to the ship tree here and we look at uh, Caldari State. The Kestrel has 5% bonus to light missile and rocket damage. So it doesn't lock you into specific damage type. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're an Omega clone here and you want to go to Assault Frigates, it's the Hawk. And unfortunately, you can see the Hawk has a 10% bonus to kinetic light missile and rocket damage. So it unfortunately locks you into kinetic damage type, which that kind of sucks. The hook bill here, which is the Caldari Navy uh, frigate that's available has a 25% bonus to connect light missile and rocket damage but you can see it has a secondary trait 20% bonus to EM explosive and thermal so it, it it's giving you the choice of your specific damage type for your rockets and your missiles so that's actually kind of nice and this is what you should try and work up towards um, from the Crestral probably try and work towards the the Caldari Navy hook bill um, because it's more damage, it's more tank, it's, it's a it's a more beefier version uh, frigate that will you can do a little bit more in the game with it. It's going to have much higher DPS so you can DPS your way through missions and um, abyssal space. So the Crestrel itself, nice little frigate. Let's let's go through the build here. So let's go through our mid slots essentially. We have an afterburner, gives us more speed, which is key in the abyss especially. Uh, we have a multi-spectrum shield hardener, which helps our shields with resistances. It effectively gives us more effective hit points. We have some shield extenders here. Again, more hit points, more hit points per second. We have in our low slots here, two ballistic control systems. This helps with damage. This helps get our damage out uh, a lot quicker with uh, our launcher types. Over here in our rig slots, we have a small bay loading accelerator. Basically ups our rate of fire, essentially. Uh, so very important, more DPS. We have small core defense field extenders. This, again, is more hit points for our tank. More effective hit points for shields and hit points per second. On the launches, we went with compact light missile launchers, the Arbalists. And we're also going with Caldari Na Navy Scourge light missiles. Uh, that is a kinetic uh, damage type, but the reason why is because I like to run Tranquil exotics, and the this the exotic filament essentially lowers the kinetic rest resistance of all enemies. So that's why we're picking the Scourge type uh, light missile for the Caldari Navy. 
I mean, that's pretty much it. The only thing is, well, let's bring that fitting back. Uh, we have decent tank, so 4,000 effective hit points. That's pretty decent, actually. 2,000 hit points for the shields, not bad. Uh, we're pretty speedy. We're not like micro warp drive speedy, but we're we're not slow, put it that way. Um, DPS is fine for what we're gonna do. Um, 100 DPS is better, uh, especially if you're gonna run tier zero abyss because you might occasionally run into a certain NPC called the uh, Skybreaker Despero Troop. And you need about 100 to 120 DPS, roughly, in order to break his tank. Um, he has a very good active tank, and it's very difficult to break that unless you have the requisite DPS for it. So you need roughly about 100 to 120. Thankfully, I've been running some tier zero abyss with this build and I haven't ran into that specific NPC. Basically CCP put that NPC into the abyss to uh, balance it out essentially. It's basically like a kill room essentially. You're supposed to die in that room. Um, you're not supposed to beat it. Uh, you can beat it. It can be beat on a, even on a consistent basis but again you need pretty good DPS in order to do it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think this build with this type of DPS is is going to be able to do that. You would have you would probably have to switch to rockets. Um, pretty sure I can get 100 DPS with rockets and that would probably be the build you'd want to go for. The only problem with that though is you're going to have to get in close with rockets and you're going to take more damage. So your tank is going to have to be up to snuff in order for that to work. Just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and we're gonna undock here. And we're gonna run some tier zero abyss. And just remember this build is also good for level one security missions. If you don't know what that that is, then they're a little bit more safer actually. Uh, so let's say you're kind of scared of the abyss and you're like, okay, I don't I don't want to do that <laughs> Okay, well you can come up here to your neocon and, and you can go to activities the agency And you can use this build in this ship for you go agent missions uh, First of all, I highly recommend that if you haven't done the career missions the career agent missions do them It's very easy. You just click on these You just start start with the enforcer set destination and it's going to send you to your career agent mission uh, that's near you. Uh, I highly recommend you do those. They're pretty straightforward. They're easy. There's nothing difficult about them and you actually get some decent rewards out of them. So I highly recommend you do those. But we're gonna go mission agents, right? And I recommend you do the security agent ones if you're into combat. Uh, and all you have to do is see, you just click level one, right? You can click your current system or you can click within however many jumps you want. Let's say there's none in your current system. Okay, we'll go out to five jumps. All right, a bunch of agents are gonna pop up, right? You can go high sec, low sec, null sec, your security status, and you can do any faction you want, essentially. Uh, the level one mission agents are, are gonna be open to you. And all you do is you just double click, and you're just gonna be able to go to them. Or you can right click on them, you can go set destination. It'll tell you exactly where they're at. You can do it that way as well. All right, so. Let's see here, a couple things. So if you're gonna do the abyss, right? Um, where there's decent rewards into this. First thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to set your safety. It's gonna be green when you start. You're gonna have to set that to a partial safety. So you set that to partial safety and then you're also going to have to, if you're in a frigate that is, you're gonna have to form a fleet with yourself. All right, we've done that. Now, we're gonna go out to just a belt somewhere and we're gonna go within with an 100. Hopefully we don't run into the Skybreaker because I don't think we're gonna beat him. <laughs> All right, so we've landed where we're gonna be, and 
all you're gonna do to start the abyss is you're gonna go to your filaments, right? So remember, tranquil filaments are tier zero. So when you're at the market and you're searching for filaments to start the abyss, remember you're gonna want you're gonna want the tranquil ones, and they're all pop up here. So the most expensive ones are the electrical ones because the Punisher frigate is very popular and it needs the electrical storm in order to get its capacitor stable in order for its tank. So this one's extremely popular, so they're not cheap. You know, they're 227000 a pop. The next more most expensive one is, of course, the exotic one because it's very popular to run missile boats and drone boats. And the exotic is probably the better area to run those in, and passive tank as well. So they're about 98,000 a pop, about 100,000 a pop. Uh, the Firestorm ones are 83,000. The Gammas are the cheapest because hardly anybody runs the Gammas. And the Dark ones run about, and they're about 60. So all you're going to do is you're going to use it, and you're going to select three frigates. We don't have three frigates, but that's why we had to create a fleet, because this is what it's for. We're going to deploy. A gate's going to pop up, and we're just going to activate the gate. And like I said, hopefully we don't run into... We're going to approach. Let's get our speed up. Let's get our tank up. Actually, I want to orbit. As you can see, look at that damage that we did there. Not bad at all. That's actually pretty good DPS against these guys. We have our tank hold up here. He's almost dead. Switch to the next target. And at this range, we could have been using rockets, which would be even more DPS. But that's a choice that you can make. I like light missiles due to being able to kite things if I have to. Um, at this point, I don't need to because they're having a really hard time breaking my tank. So, And I'm a passive... Uh, the build's considered a passive shield tank. There we are. And now you just approach the... Our loot here. Go ahead and pop it. And let's see what we get. We'll go ahead and save some cap. Eh, not too bad. We'll stack that. Now you go to the next gate, you approach, and remember there's three waves, there's three rooms essentially. And you have 20 minutes in order to finish all these rooms. So we finished that room in basically two and a half minutes. That's actually not bad. That's pretty good. And our tank held up really nicely. So we're going to activate the gate. On we go to the next room. Let's go ahead and downsize these so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay, NPCs, we're gonna target these, or actually I'm gonna unlock that. Unlock. I want to orbit. Don't forget to get your tank back up. Let's go ahead and orbit him. You can manually pilot this, but I like to just orbit the actual uh, loot cache. 
Now you won't be able to do that if you get like the Skybreaker Despero Troop. You're gonna have to manually pilot to kind of keep range at him and not go to the boundaries of the actual Abyss dungeon because if you go to the boundaries, it'll actually damage your ship. And this is the nice part about having the range of the light missiles is I can orbit the loot cache and kind of keep them at bay at a nice decent distance and still hit them. And always have your afterburner on because this is helping you tank. Speed helps tank. Speed helps frigates tank. All right, now let's approach. Let's go ahead and pop. Let's save some capacitor. about a haul so far about three roughly three million is the estimated price that's actually not bad all right let's head towards the gate and we're still making very good time as you can see we still have 15 minutes left so this is relatively quick I'm gonna let my tank get up a little bit more I'll wait till I'm about 80% here on shields just in case the last room ends up being something uh, like we didn't expect, like a skybreaker, that would be that would be awful. <laughs> we'll see. We're gonna wait till we're eighty percent here. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna activate the gate. And it's a Lucid Escort, is what we ended up getting here. Okay, let's get our tank back up. Let's go ahead and orbit at 10k and see how we see how we can tank his damage. He's actually doing pretty good damage to us, so let's go ahead and let's increase the range a little bit and keep an eye on where we're actually orbiting to make sure that we don't accidentally go outside the boundaries. See if we feel ourselves going too much outside the boundaries, we can redirect ourselves simply by double clicking and actually if you want to stay centered you can orbit even the gate itself Doing pretty good damage to him. We're breaking through his tank. He's going down pretty good. As a matter of fact, I can probably head towards... Our tank's holding up pretty well. And there you go. That's it. Not bad. And we still have 12 minutes to spare, essentially. Let's go grab our loot. Always make sure to grab your loot before you vacate the gate. Let's pick that up, not bad. And let's head towards the gate. So all in all, 
uh, maybe roughly 3.8 million on this run and relatively didn't take us very much time you know roughly about nine minutes or so not bad at all so we're going to activate the gates and we're going to immediately vacate the area because gankers love to camp these type of There we go. Kind of want to just redo those. So there you go. That's a tier zero abyss with the Caldari State Kestrel. And like I said, not very much skilling into this is required. Uh, this alpha clone only has about a million skill points. And if you use my referral link, that's going to be in the video description, you'll get 1 million skill points. Now you can utilize those skill points right away. Or you can save them and wait till you reach the 5 million skill point threshold and then utilize them. It essentially gives you a million more skill points. So instead of having 5 million skill points, you actually have 6 million skill points on your alpha clone. So that's up to you though. A lot of people just like to use them right away to kind of speed up the process of um, getting the skills. Basically what you're going to want to concentrate on is these missile skills. I'll, list, uh, I'll have a list in the video description. Uh, always your spaceship command skills, essentially, you know, because you're going to have to go Kaldari Frigate, right? So not bad, and the build altogether, roughly, is, uh, it's roughly about 8 million. Uh, this is a little bit inflated due to uh, what we have in our cargo hold, essentially. But the, the build itself is roughly, you know, 5 to 8 million, depending on the market prices. And... I highly recommend that you save up enough money to where you can buy two of this build so that way just in case you do run into the Skybreaker uh, Despero troop and he nukes you, um, you can replace this ship. You can replace this ship, you have enough money, and then go run some security, like level one security missions until you again have another replacement and then go back to running tier zero abyss. and then. Hey, move up from there. That's EVE Online. That's, uh, you know, you, you risk, take some risks, get it, some bigger rewards. And then eventually you're going to want to move up to level 2 missions. And then also like tier 1 or tier 2 abyss. But you're going to need a different ship for that. And I'll do videos on those as well. Alright, hope this video was helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. It'll help me grow the channel, help me do more videos. All right, this is Audio Jake. See you guys later.